Hello and welcome back to GMAX Studios. In the last episode, we talked about white balance. And in today's episode, we are going to talk about metering. The different kinds of metering that are available to you while taking a picture. And how do they function? Before we understand metering, let us take a look at what is incident light and what is reflected light because this is very important to know how the camera reacts and thinks to a particular situation. If you've seen episode 1, you know that the light hits the subject and enters the camera and that is how a photograph is made. So the light that hits the subject is called incident light and the light that is reflected off the subject is called reflected light. So now we know that the camera takes a reflected reading of a subject and tells you how to meter it. Now there is the problem because not all colors and all subjects reflect light equally. So we have these different colored notebooks on a black background. See how the exposure value changes once we change the different colors of the notebook. So here it is at f4.2 one fourth of a second at ISO 100. When we change the notebook it becomes one sixth of a second at the same aperture and ISO. And now if we put a black notebook on top of the black background it becomes 1.3 seconds at the same ISO and aperture. So what this means is that though the difference might be small or large depending upon case to case, different colors do reflect light differently. You know, there is often a huge gap in between what you think your photograph should be and what the camera thinks it should be like. Because the camera is primarily designed to expose everything correctly. So if you're thinking of taking, you know, those moody shots where the light is, you know, only on half of the face and the other half is in darkness, the camera does not understand that that's the kind of picture that you're trying to take it will try its level best to expose the entire image correctly. It will not understand highlights, it will not understand shadows. If it sees too many shadows, it will try to overexpose them. If it sees too many highlights, it will try to underexpose it to bring the highlights in control. And that is a real problem because you are always in one sense trying to fight with the camera and try and make the camera see the photograph as you are seeing it. So as long as the scene is evenly lit and there are no excessively dark or bright areas in the photograph, the camera seems to work just fine. But the problem starts when there are bright or dark objects within the scene, within the frame. For example, even this photograph, a simple landscape photograph with snow in it turns out to be underexposed when it should look like this. So there are primarily three or four conditions under which your camera will get fooled and give you a false reading. One, that a large part of the frame is dark. Two, a large part of the frame is bright. And number three, there is a light pointing directly into the lens or your subject is lit from behind. And it is exactly for this reason that it is important to know the various metering modes and how they function. So all camera brands, no matter whether it is Nikon or Canon or Sony or Fuji or whatever, they all come with primarily 
three or four metering modes and they are fairly simple they are just named differently for each camera and they i think they do this to confuse us but it's fairly simple to understand depending on the camera brand the metering mode is accessed by a button like this or by pressing a button like this and turning the command dial on some cameras it is accessed by entering the menu so the first metering mode that we are going to talk about is uh, called by different names by different camera makers nikon calls it matrix canon calls it evaluative sony calls it multi and fuji calls it multi as well and this is possibly the most advanced metering mode available on any camera and it is accurate 90% of the times this is usually denoted by this uh, funny symbol with a dot in the center and a pattern around it on most cameras what this metering mode does is take a reading of the entire scene of the entire frame and use a very complex algorithm by each camera maker to determine the exposure nikon for example says that it has a database of 30000 images against which it compares the frame and then gives you the exposure so this is your matrix evaluative or multimetering the next is center or average metering which is denoted by a dot with brackets around it in this mode the camera gives preference to the center of the frame and gives you an exposure reading based around that area the only mode that all the camera makers seem to agree on is the spot metering mode because they all call it by the same name in this mode the camera takes the reading of the spot on which you are focusing and it is extremely extremely precise it does not care about what is in the other part of the frame it just picks the reading of that spot and gives you the exposure so let's take an example we are in matrix metering mode and this handsome looking man that you see is me and you can see that the camera has nicely averaged out the exposure and you can see a bit of the background Now let's see what happens when we switch to spot exposure. So it is more or less the same reading because the spot is right now on my face and that is what I want to expose. But as we start moving the spot around, you can see the exposure change because it is just taking the reading of that spot and it does not care about the other light or dark areas within the frame. So this is extremely precise reading. for any particular spot So now let's see what happens when we go to the center weighted mode In this mode the camera is exposing for the center of the frame and right now as you can see I am more or less in the center of the frame so the exposure is kind of okay But if your subject is off center then the camera might get confused and give you a picture that you don't want so you have to compose accordingly so i hope this has brought some clarity into what kind of metering mode you should be using in what situations and in the last episode i told you that i would be telling you about the most important button on the camera and while some of you might say that it's the on off button or it's the shut button of course those are very obvious answers but according to me the most important button is the exposure compensation button It is denoted by a plus minus sign on the camera and what this button does is override the decision made by the camera 
to expose the picture by underexposing it or overexposing it according to your vision. So this is an extremely important button and I think everybody should be very familiar with it and should use it to get the best picture possible. So the exposure compensation button is denoted by a plus minus sign like this or in some cameras it might just be in the form of a dial. And what you have to essentially do is either turn the dial to a plus value or press the button and turn the command dial depending upon the model of your camera to underexpose or overexpose the photograph as you see fit. So here is this non-ideal scenario where I am lit from behind and what I could do is change the exposure compensation to a plus 2.3 uh, which takes me to the desired exposure or I could obviously switch to spot metering to again get the desired exposure on my face. The opposite would apply if I wanted to underexpose the image and create a silhouette. So in that case I would underexpose the image until I get the desired result. How much you under or overexpose the image comes by experience and the more you shoot the more you will understand how your camera sensor reacts to light. So this is it as far as metering modes are concerned and in the next episode we will talk about lenses, we will talk about zooms, we will talk about primes and we'll talk a lot, we'll just talk a lot. And so until the next episode you take care and do not forget to subscribe to this channel and share this video with your friends on Twitter, Facebook and Google+. Until the next episode, take care.